Hello, I'm Jara Summerford, President of the Tennessee Education Association. Today I'm introducing the third in a series of four presentations called The Trouble with TVOS. As we all know, TVOS is problematic and its use uh, for the basis of licensure and other high stakes decisions is just not appropriate. Those decisions are too important to be based on something as questionable as value added measures. So if you've seen our presentations before, you know that our general counsel, Rick Colbert, has done a significant amount of research on this topic. And in today's presentation, he's going to share with you again some points for that he's collected from the Strategic Data Project, among other research that he's done. So please enjoy the presentation. Let us know if you have questions about it that you'd like to hear more. And thank you again for your concern. On August 12, we distributed a presentation to members of the State Board of Education. That presentation showed why the Commissioner's proposal to base teacher licensure decisions solely on TVOS results, regardless of what the teacher may have made on her overall evaluation score, was misguided. We recently expounded on some of the details of that earlier presentation, focusing on the subjects of standard error and confidence intervals to illustrate why TVOS estimates do not have the sort of mathematical precision that the Commissioner has suggested. In fact, as we showed, it is the often acknowledged imprecision of those estimates that calls for great care in how they are used and that makes the Commissioner's licensure idea so wrong. This is the third in a series of presentations to illustrate why the plan to use TVOS results to make or break a teacher's career by denying licensure renewal even when overall evaluation results are good is so wrong. Let us emphasize that we are not opposing and have not opposed every aspect of the new licensure policy. But we are adamant in our opposition to the portion of the policy that would deny a teacher's ability to advance or renew her license based solely on TVOS results regardless of her overall evaluation results. That portion of the plan treats TVOS results as something they simply are not. In our last presentation, we discussed how this justification used by the Commissioner for his proposal is misguided because it does not take into account the wide confidence interval within which TVOS estimates actually fall. As we pointed out, accounting for that confidence interval produces a result that looks more like this with the dots representing value-added estimates and this wide shaded area representing the range within we can actually be 90% confident that the truth really lies. In other words, the value-added result, in our case TVOS, is an estimate. As with any estimate, we cannot be certain it is accurate but we are 90% certain that the accurate result falls somewhere in this range or interval. Of course, that means there's still a 10% chance that the truth could actually be outside this interval. And if you go to the 95% confidence interval that statisticians normally prefer, the range within which we can predict that the truth actually lies gets even wider. As you know from our last presentation, this is the actual graph that the Commissioner claimed to have used, but in fact modified for his presentation to the State Board of Education. It came out of this report by the Strategic Data Project. Today we want to talk a little bit more about the Strategic Data Project. The Strategic Data Project is housed at the Center for Education Policy Research at Harvard. According to this report on the Fulton County Schools, the project was launched in 2009. It is supported by the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. At the time of this report in February 2011, it partnered with 10 school districts, two of which were state level agencies, and one network of charter management organizations. It described its work as partnering with school districts, school networks, and state agencies to bring high quality research methods and data analysis to bear on management and policy decisions. The Tennessee Department of Education under Commissioner Huffman has now partnered with the Strategic Data Project. The Strategic Data Project describes its mission as one to transform the use of data in education to improve student achievement. 
you will note that the components in this triangle symbolizing the strategic data project uses to illustrate its mission. The base of the triangle includes not only the right data, but also the right analysis. In terms of the right analysis, it is worthwhile to examine another 2011 report of the strategic data project on the use of value-added measures like TVOS. In this report, the strategic data project makes several important points that the commissioner ignored when he invited the State Board of Education to approve his plan to use TVOS results to make or break licensure decisions. The strategic data project acknowledges that while value-added measures are useful, they are far from a complete measure for teacher effectiveness. The strategic data project uses value-added measures to invite deeper inquiry about school system practices but does not use value-added measures to evaluate individual teachers. The strategic data project acknowledges that there are clear limitations to value-added measures that must be taken into consideration when interpreting results. The strategic data project points out that standardized tests on which value-added estimates are based do not nearly capture everything we value in what students learn or teachers teach. The strategic data project recognizes that different tests can alter the estimates for individual teachers. The strategic data project recognizes that the assumptions used for the statistical model in value-added models are too pristine for the real world. The strategic data project points out that regrouping of students with different peers and teachers is problematic for value-added measures and points out that different value-added models control for different factors and can produce different results. The strategic data project points out that there are external factors that can affect student performance that are not accounted for and may therefore make measures of teacher value added inaccurate. The strategic data project describes the problem of missing data and how it can distort an individual teacher's value added estimates. The strategic data project believes these caveats or limitations must be taken into account when deciding how to use value added measures. Importantly, the strategic data project says that value-added measures should be used in conjunction with other measures of teaching effectiveness, like observations and student feedback, rather than using value-added measures in isolation. This recommendation is not new or unique to the strategic data project. Eighteen years ago, the author of TVOS, Professor Sanders, said this, no responsible person claims that any form of assessment can appraise the totality of a student's school experience or even the entirety of the learning that is a part of that experience. When a variety of valid and reliable assessment methods exist, it is parochial and ineffectual to adhere to only one, asserting that it is in all instances superior. But that sort of parochial and ineffectual adherence to just one assessment method is exactly what the commissioner illustrated in this slide on page 15 of his presentation that he gave to the State Board of Education on June 21. It should be noted that you will not find this slide in the modified version of that presentation that is now accessible on the State Board of Education's website as an attachment to its August 16 agenda. But the slide is important because it illustrates so clearly what the commissioner has in mind. The last hypothetical teacher you see illustrated here, Ms. Jones, received satisfactory evaluations in each of the last three years of her career, but loses her license due solely to her TVOS results. Lest you have any doubt about the commissioner's intent to have our state engage in this rigid adherence to TVOS that even Dr. Sanders describes as parochial and ineffectual, 
take a look back at the commissioner's report on the year one implementation of the teacher evaluation system. This report was issued in July 2012. In it you will find that wherever TVOS scores are worse than the scores of a principal's observation, the commissioner automatically ascribes some sort of mathematical certainty to the TVOS estimate and concludes that the observing evaluators must be in error. Hence, the commissioner determined that evaluators with observation scores that deviate significantly from TVOS estimates, which he called quantitative scores, should themselves have their certification as evaluators reevaluated. In July 2013, the commissioner persuaded the State Board of Education to revise the evaluation policy to provide that if student achievement growth scores, also known as TVOS estimates, and observation results are sufficiently different, the principals at those schools with the most discrepancies will have to participate in additional training and may lose their ability to use alternate evaluation models. In other words, if there is a discrepancy, State Board of Education Policy 5.201 now disregards the fact that a TVOS score is actually an estimate that falls within a confidence interval, treats it as mathematically precise, and assumes that the observation score must be wrong. In the 2012 Year 1 report, the Commissioner also proposed that a teacher with a 4 or 5 on TVOS should be allowed to use that score for 100% of her total evaluation score, regardless of what the principal observing her may think of her work. And in 2013, the commissioner convinced the General Assembly to follow that idea of allowing TVOS scores to be the sole measure of a teacher's evaluation if the result is a four or five. Dr. Sanders himself would call this parochial and ineffectual. As we consider the latest proposal to make parochial and ineffectual use of TVOS scores in licensure decisions, let us not forget Cynthia Watson. Ms. Watson is an experienced teacher who is highly thought of by her peers and supervisors. Her wildly distributed TVOS estimates are illustrative of the flaw in relying solely on such scores for high stakes decisions. Dr. Sanders knew in 1995 that it was parochial and ineffectual to adhere to only one method of assessing teachers. The Strategic Data Project has cautioned that value-added measures should not be used in isolation as measures of teacher effectiveness, but rather in conjunction with other measures like observations and student feedback. The Commissioner's misguided efforts to make greater use of TVOS than that for which it is designed and suited should not be followed at the expense of teachers' careers.